this video, we will talk all about variables. What is a variable and how can we use it to make an animated program? We already learned how to draw a shape on our canvas, right? Like you see here, I have drawn an ellipse or a circle um, at the X and Y location of 200 comma 200 and the size of 100 by 100. The way that I put in an argument here, um, we call it hard coding, meaning that the values are fixed throughout the program. It cannot be changed. What does that mean? It means that the circle that you see here cannot be moved throughout the program because the location is fixed at 200 comma 200. So what if we want to make an animated program where we want to move the circle around? What we have to do is that we have to find a way to be able to change the value of the position throughout the program. And we can do that by using a variable. So let's talk about what is a variable. A variable is basically a storage unit and it can store data. Think of it as a box that has information in it. I want to talk about its main four characteristics. The first thing is that, like I said, it's a box that stores data and it can store all types of data. But in this video, I'm not going to dive into the different data types, but the data that we want to store is the number 200, right? And this 200, the data type is called an integer. The second characteristic is that this box has a name. It has a name so that we can reference which box it is that we store our data. So the name that we name our variable should have something to do with the data that we store. The third characteristic is that if the data that we store is numeric, right, we can do all sorts of mathematical operations, whether it be addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and all sorts of other things. And the last characteristic that I want to talk about is that the data that we store in our variable can change throughout the program. And this is the main thing why we want to use a variable to store the number 200 so that we can move our circle around. Now let's talk about how do we create a variable. There are two main steps. The first one is declaration and the second one is initialization. In the first step, declaration, there are two main smaller steps. The first one is to give it a keyword and the keyword that we're gonna give, there are three of them, let, var, and const. And then the second mini step is that we need to give it a name, just like I mentioned earlier. In the second step is initialization. We need to give it an initial value. Why do we call it an initial value? The reason is because it is just the value that we give a variable at the beginning because whatever we store in this box can be changed throughout the program. So where do we create a variable? Variables can be created in various parts of our program, depending on how much do we want it to be accessible and usable. Think about a box, right? And this box has something that you put inside and you put this box in your bedroom. The only person that can access and can use the stuff inside the box is just you, right? The scope is very small. On the other hand, if you put that box in front of your house, all of your neighbors can see this box, can access it, can use it. The scope is much broader. Just like the variable and the things that you store inside, the scope depends on what you want to have its visibility and its accessibility to be. In our example right now, I'm gonna create a variable that has the broadest scope and we call it a global variable. And the location that we would create this variable is gonna be outside of the setup function and the draw function. And normally you put it at the top of your program. Let's start by giving it a keyword. Let, I'm gonna name this variable X because um, it represents the X location of the circle. And I'm gonna initialize it by giving it the value of 200. I'm gonna create another variable called Y and give it the same number. And then once we declare and initialize X and Y, then we can use them by just replacing the number 200, 200 with X and Y. Okay, so once I click play, what do you think would happen? Nothing happened, it's exactly the same. The reason is because we basically just changed the way the number 200 and 200 are stored, but we didn't do anything else, right? So what we want to do next is that we now want to be able to move the circle around. So I'm gonna do the simplest example by moving the circle one pixel to the right at a time. So to increment the value of X, what I need to do is I need to write an expression called X equals to X plus one. Does anyone have any questions? Because if you don't, you're not listening. 
Because how can x equals to x plus 1? 1 does not equal to 1 plus 1. I've never learned in a math class. But before you start yelling, let me explain. So this expression here does not mean that the thing on the left equals to the thing on the right. What it is saying is that, hey, set the thing on the left equal to the thing on the right. The equal sign that you see here, we call it an assignment operator. So how this expression works is that it takes the value that is stored in the variable x, 200, and then it does a mathematical operation of plus 1, right? So that's the third characteristic, right? And then now the value on the right is now 201. And then it sets whatever is on the left, which is x to 201. So now x is storing the value of 201 as the draw function is being called. The number 201 becomes 202, becomes 203. And that's how we move the circle from where it is to the right. So let's see. There you go. So now that we see this, I want to give you another way of writing x equals to x plus 1. There are two shortcuts. The first one is you can write x plus equals to 1. x plus equals to 1 is exactly the same as x equals to x plus 1. And you don't have to keep it just 1, right? It can be 10. This can be 10. So these two expressions are exactly the same. Another way to write this, you can do x plus plus. However, x plus plus only mean x equals to x plus 1. But for now, I'm going to keep it as the simplest way, which is x equals to x plus 1. Before I end this video, I want to touch on the last piece. Has anyone questioned why background is placed underneath the draw function and not the setup function? Why do we have to keep coloring the background, basically? So let's try and put it in the setup function and see what happens. There's a trail behind the circle. Let's go through our program line by line, right? First of all, we create a canvas of the size 400 by 400 pixels, right? And then we color the background to be like gray, right? These two functions are only called once. And then within the draw function, we say, hey, pick up a salmon color, draw the circle at the location, start with 200, comma 200, color it that color, and then what? And then move x to the right one pixel. And then we go through the draw function again. So we keep drawing the circle, but we never reset the background. Right? And that's why you see this black trail here. It's basically the outline of the circle that moved one pixel at a time. Right, The background function, when we place it underneath the draw function, is basically a trick for us to clear the background, right? to clear the background so that we can see the animation that we want to see. The location at which you place the background function really depends on the output that you want to see. But if you want it to look like an animated program or you want to clear your screen, you would put it underneath the draw function. So now you see a way for us to use a variable to change the values of things within our program, right? Why don't you give it a try and do it for the y value? Or just try different ways to use a variable to make a more interesting animated program.